Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa Lesniak and we are here for another tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to paint a very easy and simple whimsical night sky using watercolor and ink. So first we are going to start with a flat wash brush and this one is a Princeton Velvet Touch 1 inch and we are going to wet the entire paper. We are going to start by making a gradient of the sky and the water and I'm going to be using a couple of different kinds of blues and turquoise to achieve a nice gradient from top to bottom. So we're adding the darkest darkest colors on top and the midline greens around the middle and softening it out to the bottom edges. So for the top, I am mixing in some Anthraquinone Blue, some Payne's Gray, and some, one second, let me see what it is here, <laughs> some Thalo Turquoise. Um, and I am mixing all three colors. I tend to mix on my paper instead of in a palette. I just really love the, the way it looks when I mix it on the paper because you can see all of the colors kind of peeking through instead of having just one cohesive mixture. And I want to make sure that my paper remains wet the entire time. So if there are any dry spots like there were at the bottom, I am just going to add a bit of water to make sure that the paint flows. So what I'm doing is you'll notice that I didn't add any paint to the bottom. So in order to achieve that smooth gradient, I am dragging the paint from the top in one continuous motion all the way to the bottom. So I'm laying down, um, I'm doing this in several layers, right? So I'm going to first lay down my color, do the gradient wash, add more color, do the gradient wash, add more color. And that's what you're going to see me doing um, over, the over the course of the next few minutes. So I want to continually add color, especially to the very top, because I want to make that the darkest part. And in order to mix the colors, the blue and the green, as we go down, I am just pulling that color down by using one continuous back and forth motion not lifting up my brush at all and sweeping it across the paper up and down and up and down and you'll get a nice smooth gradient blend. So I'm going to continue doing this until I achieve the color gradient that I am looking for. So if you wanted a lighter um, color gradient, then you can stop now instead of adding more paint. I really want the top to be a bit darker. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some more anthraquinone blue and I'm going to add a little bit more Payne's gray and I'm going to continue dragging that color down. So what happens when you drag the color down is that as you are depositing color from your brush, your brush gets cleaner and cleaner. So as you work your way down, it gets lighter and lighter. So we're going to continue doing this until you have reached the um, color saturation that you are looking for. And that's going to be different for everyone. I want mine really dark on top. So I'm going to keep working on it until I've achieved that look. When you are done with this piece, we are not, or, or with this section, we're not going to let it completely dry. We're going to keep working on it wet on wet. So I'm going to allow it to dry for, uh, not even dry, I'm going to allow it to settle for about a minute before moving on to the next step. So I am just about done. This is my very last go around and I'm going to let it settle for about 
a minute. If you're using 100% cotton watercolor paper, that's about how long it takes um, to get to the, this next step. If you're using non-cotton watercolor paper, you might want to do this immediately instead of letting it settle. So you want to completely clean your brush off and um, add just a little bit of water to the tip. And with that tip of the brush, just dab it onto the paper. You'll see here, I'm just dab, dab, dab. And by adding in clean water, it separates the paint away from the water and you can start lifting up some of that paint. So with a completely dry brush and a paper towel by your side, make sure you have a paper towel, clean off that brush and um, try to scrub some of that paint off from the middle and then work your way around in circles to blend the outer edges. And this is why we want to keep the paper wet as we're working on it. It'll make it so much easier to blend the outer edges so that you don't have that hard circular waterline. So these are going to be our stars. So you can do as many or as few as you'd like. So these are going to be um, sort of like a glowing star coming out of the sky. And we're gonna add a little bit of details to them. So you can make a couple of big ones, a couple of really tiny ones. The more water you add to it, the bigger the separation will be. So if you add just a teeny tiny drop of water, you'll have a little teeny tiny um, star glow. So add as many or as few as you'd like to the very top of the page. Don't go any lower than the mid mark um, or try to keep it on the first like quarter of the page or the first third of the page um, because we are going to be adding in some water underneath. And when you are done with this section, if you like the way it came out, let it completely dry before moving on to the next part. Now, once this piece is done and it has completely dried, grab a white gel pen. I am using a Uniball Signo. Um, it's one of the my favorite gel pens. It's really thick and it's really, really white. Unfortunately, this one is uh, running out of ink, so you'll see it skip a little, but that's okay because it's going to aid me in the look that we're going for now. So in the very big circles, I am going to add a star to each one and then in the smaller ones I am just going to add a little tiny dot of white. So do that it right smack in the middle of every single circle that you have created using that lifting up technique that I showed you in the last few minutes. Okay once we have our stars and dots Right in the middle of the circle, we are going to very lightly hold the gel, the gel pen, just barely touching the paper because we don't want perfect circles here. We want the gel pen to skip a little off the paper and we want different um, thicknesses in your circle, in your line strength, and um, we want it, we don't want perfect circles. If you are having trouble holding your pen really lightly and allowing it to skip over the paper, then just um, add, you know, small lines across instead or around instead of one continuous um, circle. And we're going to do this for every single star and every light area that we have uh, painted into the sky.
Now, once this part is done, we are going to head on over to the bottom and start with the water. So grab a ruler and what we're going to do is mark the very ends of our paper. Try to keep it um, as even as possible. So we're going to put a little mark on the left side and a little mark on the right side. And these are going to be our guides. So our waves for the water are going to start and end at these marks so that we have a nice even so you see the two marks here, we'll have a nice even wave across our paper. And we are going to draw three sets of these waves. So once you have your lines or your guides, little dots, lines, whatever, we're just going to do a swirly wave pattern across the paper. And we're going to do this three times. Again, my pen is apparently running out of ink and I can't find the other one, so I'm gonna stick with this. So I'm going to, um, fa not fast forward, I'm gonna speed this process up just a tiny, tiny bit so that you don't see me struggling to draw a straight line or, or, or a, a, a continuous line with this poor gel pen that is running out of ink. Once we are done adding our three wave lines, um, we're going to make them a little bit bolder. So I'm just going to take the same gel pen and then just go over it a little bit. You don't have to make these super, super bold, just a tiny bit bolder because we're going to add some extra lines and we want to show some separation between um, the three layers of waves. So take your gel pen. You can even use some white watercolor or white gouache. You don't really even need a gel pen for this at this point, um, but or some white acrylic, whatever white you feel comfortable, comfortable with and a very tiny brush. And we are going to increase the weight of these lines. Once that is done, we are going to add a little bit of definition to the water by adding in some wavy lines in between our thicker waves. So once again, for this part, you really wanna hold your gel pen very lightly. You want it to skip across the paper. You don't want to have um, a continuous swirly line. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for the glowiness of the stars above, and we're just going to have a little breakup of waves in between 
the existing thick ones that we have. And you can add as many or as few as you'd like. You can make them close together, far apart. However you want, this is just going to show a little bit of movement in the water. And now let's add a couple of little random stars to the sky. So using that same gel pen, just add a couple of dots here and there along the, um, the upper half of the paper and add them in, just move them around or scatter them around um, and then try to not make it look deliberate and even. Next, let's draw a little sailboat in the water. So um, you can totally freehand this, right, with your gel pen or with your white ink or watercolor. Um, I am not going to take that chance because I don't want to ruin my already adorable little painting. So I'm going to take a pencil and I am going to sketch in a sailboat. The good thing is that if you make a mistake, you can just erase it. Try not to press too hard. A kneaded eraser works wonders on watercolor. It doesn't leave any shavings and it um, doesn't pick up the watercolor. So I'm going to use the kneaded eraser, erase any mistakes that I made and continue drawing my boat. Once my boat um, is done, and I'm, we're just going to draw in um, or paint in a silhouette of a boat, but it's going to be in white, so it's going to be a different kind of a silhouette, right? It's not going to be completely black. Um, so once I am done painting in my silhouette, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is a whimsical piece, so if you wanted to draw a whimsical little sailboat, feel free to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're painting a silhouette, so there are very, very minimal details. So you can use a white gel pen to completely fill this in. Since my gel pen is running out of ink, I am going to use my Copic Opaque White. And Copic Opaque White is an alcohol-based um, uh, ink. Um, so if you ever heard of like the Copic markers, that's almost, almost kind of what this is. It's, it's nice and thick. And I use this um, for all of the white you see in all of my paintings. And it really does act like watercolor. You can activate it with water. Uh, once it's there, it's there. You can still smudge it, but it works wonders. It's the whitest white that I have found. Um, so I am going to color in lines. I'm going to make sure that all of my pencil coverings are completely covered and I am going to paint in the sailboat. And once you are done painting in your sailboat, then your entire piece is done. It's really simple, really easy, and just a really pretty whimsical little piece um, that won't take very long. It's a nice, quick um, piece to, to loosen your hands. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and I will see you all 
in the next one. Bye.